Good evening, class. My name is Nanette Ramirez, and I'll be your moderator for this evening. Welcome to the Archetype Pattern Workshop. This is a workshop and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This workshop is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This workshop was established as a result of a divine vision and divine revelation given to Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year of 1931. He established various schools throughout the United States, Canada, and other locations throughout the world. This organization, the Archetype Pattern Workshop, was established in February 2021. In this workshop, we use the true and correct and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is the title that our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state, He is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limit, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state, symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive in shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a superincorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form could only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelation. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. The simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time that he walked the earth plain? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this workshop, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop of Mount Sinai, and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. 
Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, holy place, and court roundabout. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this workshop, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. Our 10 primary aims of this workshop are first, to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah, without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by, the by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered to the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there was no other name given among men whereby men can be saved save in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. Tenth, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. This evening we'll have a prayer by Dr. Samuel Solis and our scripture lesson will be read by Eunice, Dr. Eunice Reiser, first, Second Corinthians, the fifth chapter, and there'll be a selection of music after the prayer. Good evening, class. Good evening. It's a time of prayer. Thank you, all, Almighty Yahweh, for make possible for us to be here, you faithful sons. No matter how the weather is, if we can, and we provide, you provide, we can reach the place, the place of the highest learning. We come here to learn your purpose and your plan. It's beautiful. Every class is beautiful. Thank you for giving us the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. I don't have uh, more words to say, but this teaching is wonderful. I say all those things in your only son's name, Yahshua the Messiah. Let's all say, Hallelujah. 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 Caught up in a world they say happened by chance. They want to believe that it's all. Try to convince me they shape 
their own destinies. But if they knew ya, like I know ya, they'd get down on their knees. Yes, if they knew ya, like I know ya, they'd get down on their knees. They don't know he's in complete control. Elohim is running his show, yeah. He's in complete control. Elohim is running his show. Freedom of choice is the law they're spreading around. Divine intervention is nice if God is ever around. They don't want to believe their every step was patterned by him. That he's got it wrapped up tight, light upon light. They're going back to spirit again. He's got it wrapped up tight, light upon light. They're going back to spirit again. They don't know he's in complete control. Elohim is running his show. He's in complete control. Elohim is running his show. He's Alpha Omega, Almighty Creator. First cause of creation. The Lamb saint from the He told Jeremiah, I made you a prophet long before. This earth had shape without form before it was born. Yeah. He said, I possess your ways before I made the deep blue sea. I am the cause, the reason for it all, and all I had to do was speak. Yes, I am the cause, the reason for it all. Good evening, class. Our scripture lesson will be taken from 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter, page 241, and I'll be reading out of the Holy Name Bible containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testament, critically compared with ancient authorities in various manuscripts, revised by the late A.B. Trainum. 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of Elohim, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, 
for clothes upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that has wrought us for the selfsame thing is Elohim, who also has given unto us the pledge of the Spirit. Therefore we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from Yahweh. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with Yahweh. Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted by him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of the Messiah, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he has done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of Yahweh, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto Yahweh, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciousness. For we commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that ye may have somewhat to answer them which glory in appearance and not in heart. For if we be beside ourselves, it is to Elohim, and if we be sober, it is for your cause. For the love of the Messiah constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then were all dead, and that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known the Messiah after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in the Messiah, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of Yahweh, who has reconciled us to himself by Yahshua the Messiah, and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that Yahweh was in the Messiah, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for the Messiah, as though Elohim did beseech you by us. We pray you in the Messiah's stead, be ye reconciled to Yahweh. For he has made him to be sin offering for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of Yahweh in him. I have read 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. Let us all say, hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Dr. Samuel Salas and Dr. Eunice Reiser. So this evening is our open lecture, open testimony night. And um, the first speaker I'd like to call is Dr. Vercel Mack. Okay. All right, good evening, brethren. And peace and love in Yahshua, our savior. And I am really grateful and, and thankful to be here Anytime we can gather, any class, but I'm really, really grateful and thankful to be here this evening. Um, I love Open Testimony Night because it gives the body an opportunity to be exercised. You know, whether we're going over something that we have been researching and learning or just a testimony. It's really important. So what's on my heart and mind? So stumbling blocks. And this has been on my heart and mind because I had um, uh, a death, burial, and resurrection <laughs> story that I just wanted to share with you all. And so, you know, Satan is the author of confusion, and it's his, it's his purpose. You know, he loves it because um, that's what he's been given to do. And we remember that dragon was wroth with the woman. <laughs> 
And we are, um, the woman is us specifically, Yahshua's bride. So, and, and he, he, we're just talking about reconciliation. I love the prayer. I love the song and I love the scripture lesson, um, this evening, you know, um, talking about reconciliation and I want to go over a couple of things in that, um, really quickly, but, um, you know, he loves is is to his pleasure, so to speak, um, to want us to fight amongst ourselves, right? Can we go back to the scripture lesson? Um, can we go to starting at 10, 1 Corinthians 5 and 10? 1 Corinthians 5 and 10. I mean, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians. Corinthians. Oh, I'm sorry. 2 Corinthians 5 and 10. <laughs> For we must all appear before the judgment seat of the Messiah, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. This is something that I think about, and I'm grateful that he has this on my heart and mind. You know, just like you, uh, a parent is to their children, you don't want them to just be scared of you and things like that. But the beginning of the knowledge is the fear of Yahweh and it's, it's respect. And I'm grateful that he has that on my heart and mind to even be thinking about um, this time because everything is going on in the world. Um, and you know, you have people that believe that um, on judgment day and things like that, but we know that they don't understand Yahweh the way he really is and truly exists. So everyone has different thoughts about what that is, but it is um, a reality. You know, it is his reality. And those things are on my heart and mind because we're not being, it's been said before, we're not being saved by Satan. Yahshua did that when he went through his death, burial, resurrection, and outpoured the Holy Spirit. You know, Satan, he has no understanding of what's going on right now and so we're being saved from Yahweh's wrath you know and that's just something that is on my heart and mind and I'm thankful for that read knowing therefore the terror of Yahweh we persuade men but we are made manifest unto Yahweh and I trust also are are made manifest to your conscience for we can yes. oh, go ahead go ahead go ahead for we commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that they may have somewhat to answer them, which glory in appearance and not in the heart. Okay, thank you. Because, you know, we sit and talk about there's no big eyes and little use, and there's not. There's really not. Everyone has been given a portion, you know, and, you know, if you don't know what your portion is, ask them. He'll tell you. None of us to be are to be glorified, and everyone who truly understands wouldn't even want that in the first place because he's the only one that's worthy. None of us are worthy to this day. It is his grace and his mercy, you know, that keeps us in here, keeps us in class, just just the whole thing. So I just wanted to just start there and just say how grateful and thankful I am to the Father through Yahshua for having me. Um, knowing anything about him and just having me just set right here. Just he has me right in place and I'm just thankful for that. So again, the stumbling blocks, you know, we're going over the sixth um, step, that veil of the flesh. You know, some things we have been, you know, he has made us meet and you know, he has delivered us from so many things, but you know, Yahweh, he's delivering us from things every day. It's not just one main thing. One main thing was, knowing him the way he really is and actually exists. All of us have different things going on within our lives, and we know that, you know what I'm saying? And um, um, you never know what somebody is actually going through. That's why um, you shouldn't judge, and, you know, we can't put on anyone what they should be doing or anything like that, because Yahshua, like the song said, he had, he's an alpha and the omega, he has all things under control. You don't know what my sicknesses are or whatever my ailments are. I don't know what yours are. And they may not be the same. You know, and I use this example all the time. If we was in a hospital and if somebody had a low sodium diet, they can have no salt. 
If somebody is allergic to uh, milk, they're lactose, into lactose intolerant. It just depends. But Yahshua is dealing with each and every last one of us according to what it is that we need. You see, even though he's giving everyone the all, everybody's going to get fed. Everybody's going to have a foundation, you see. And it's just um, important to remember, even though we say it with our mouth, you know, we read these scriptures and quote verses and everything, that um, the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, is the one that's actually teaching. It's teaching us everything. So we have different situations. And so I'm going to share with you um, my um, death, burial, and resurrection story regarding, like, the changes um, that took place in this class. And so I just want to say that... I loved and was very much a part of how the class operated, you know, before we actually had some changes. Now, listen, brethren coming together, uh, that's, that's, there's nothing wrong with change. Change is actually inevitable. You know, it's just, it was a different time. It was a different operation and just things like that, right? And sometimes we get too comfortable with things, you know. Now, I'm going to tell you, honestly, when... These things, because actually the change was actually welcome. I really want to say that, you know, and again, because um, there was brethren that was already there in the first place. I've never been in that class, you know, um, not um, physically so, you know, so it was a good thing. So there was a speaker um, that actually spoke a couple of times that really just left a bad taste in my mouth, um, so to speak. Their um, intent and their conduct was vile. And along with other conducts and behaviors that I see, you know, it wasn't, it, it just wasn't good. And, you know, honestly, I associate people by the company that they keep. This was very, um, yeah, we're not going to stay here too long because this is the death part. So this is my death story, right? And so I'm thinking, like, if this, gonna be, if this is what's going to be going on in here, I don't want um, any parts of this, you know, and I was really, really hurt because really, really close with the brethren in the class, you know, and um, and hurt causes anger, you see, and I was angry for a while. So that's my death, right? That was the death. And then um, the burial. Yahweh, when I don't know, when I'm upset, and I don't know what to do. It's a lot of things going on. And at that time, it was. You know, Yahweh caused me to stand still. Because when your mind is all over the place, that's the best thing to do, is stand still. Because this too shall pass. You know, and it did. <laughs> this, like, this really works. This whole death, burial, resurrection, it applies to, to, to so many different things. So, and it did. Now, I don't know how... Other people communicate with Yahweh, but I know how he communicates with me. He actually speaks. And so I can just hear him. And, you know, he can hear, you know, because we go to the Father, with whatever it is that's bothering us, especially when something is just not right, right? So I could hear him saying, well, has the moderation changed? No, Father. Have they changed my doctrine? No, Father. Are they still teaching law, prophet, fulfillment? Yes, Father. Are they expounding on my tabernacle? Yes, Father. This is real, you guys. Are you learning? Yes, Father. He was like, just within, enjoy my feast. You see, eat up. Enjoy my milk. It's a smorgasbord. It, enjoy what I have put before you. Enjoy what I've given you. And so my burial was adjusting to change and accepting what Yahweh has allowed. See, you know, he was with me while I was licking my little wounds and everything, you know, and because change again is inevitable. But Yahweh is that song set. He's in control. Nothing is happenstance. You know, we go by the way we see things sometimes, and you should. You have to discern, but you have to know when it's appropriate. 
And, you know, because you can't change anybody, you can't change these type of things. These are the things, that's what I'm talking about, stumbling blocks, where Satan wants us to be picking and this and that over. No, no, no. We don't have to do that. And t- sometimes it takes Yahweh, and not even sometimes, it takes Joshua to get you through everything, you know, the death, ground, resurrection. And speaking of which, you know, um, the school, um, all these different things, because the, um, what the title is and all of this other kind of stuff. Listen, we are, it doesn't matter what the, uh, the name of the school is. It, it doesn't matter. Um, because we're not saved in the IDMR. Now, I know that this um, school, this class is not part of the IDMR, but we're not saved in the IDMR. Look, even before, even people that still preach righteously, um, um, the brethren that preach the truth still, not really, you know, the IDMR, you can't use their name, all this kind of stuff, but you're not saved in an organization. You're not saved in a name. So we're not saved in the IDMR. We're not that saved in the um, archetype pattern. We're not saved in an archetype workshop. You know what I'm saying? It's not, you know, because Joshua is salvation. These are schools. This is where he has brought us to come and learn of him. And again, that's all I kept hearing. What has changed? Now, I'm going to talk about people. That's one thing. But as far as what we're really in here for, to keep our eye on Joshua, all of it, whatever is a distraction or whatever the case may be, he has allowed it to actually be so. So I'm grateful for that, you know, because that was the burial, you know. But then here's the resurrection. That's the Holy Spirit. And I have thoroughly been enjoying class. You know, I love what's being brought out on the 40 play chart. I have these charts at home. And, you know, I don't even know, you know, I've gone through them, but not like we're going through them now. You know, and I really appreciate that. This has been very edifying, and it's been enlightening, and it's been actually fun, and I actually look forward to, because, you know, when we're going over, I think sometimes it's just the way things are presented. You know, we're, um, we're okay, or people's different methods or ways that they do things that we may not agree with or appreciate. Um, you know, just in how it's, Sometimes people don't know how to relay the message or it just makes it look a certain type of way. It, it has been very helpful to actually go through those two charts that we're going through, the seven steps, you know, um, just do that because basically we know it. But, you know, when we went through um, um, the trek from Egypt into Canaan's land, just things like, you know, knowing that the third step is going with the brazen labor, but it was also an opening. It was the door open for them to actually go through into the Red Sea to even get to the wilderness of Sinai. So it's like, it seems like it's little things, but those things are actually big because you do want to have a, a thorough understanding of what is actually going on. And so it's just... Um, it's just been really, really good. And I'm really, really grateful. I'm really, really thankful for all of the things, the good and the bad. You know, um, you know, faith comes by hearing, and the hearing the word of Yahweh. And we do walk by faith, not by sight. That was in the scripture lesson, you know. And he has raised able-bodied ministers. And no matter what level, you know, what some may consider to be an able-bodied minister of course we're here in this class to continue to learn to continue to grow you know but the revelation you can preach until you blew in the face the revelation is only going to come through Yahshua the Messiah and he's given us all something he's given us all something we all have a gift to actually be able to share until he gets us where um uh, uh where whatever is meat to him because he's already said that he actually have we have been translated we have been made me. So I remember these things, you know, that it is the Holy Spirit that is in control of everything. His Father in control of everything but through the Holy Spirit, you know, and I trust him. I trust him because there's no lie in him. He did not bring us out here to leave us. It is not up to who um, anybody else's um, perspective or anything like that. 
you know, um, it, it has nothing to do with that um, at all. So, again, change is inevitable. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it can appear to be bad. But Yahweh has purposed it all. And at the end of the day, you know, the more we understand that no matter what happens, he has allowed it to happen. Now, nobody gets anything over on him. He sees everything because he is a true discerner of the heart and mind. And I'm grateful for that. Because sometimes you may not hear other people say it, and you might be scared to say something. Sometimes Yahweh himself will be your only witness. And I'm going to tell you, if Yahweh is for you, you know, who can be against you? So people are people. And see, this is another thing. We, change is inevitable. But listen, Yahweh changes not. We have stability with him because there's no change in him. People can change. Yahweh changes not. That is stability, that is consistency, and he knows exactly what it is he's doing. So people are people in and out of the class. So it's not wise to have any kind of expectations of anyone. And as far as Israel, Israel is, um, is Israel. So, and I just, I've never been part of, um, and I'm happy that it's not in me, um, to be part of the go along, get along gang. I, I, I'm not with. I, I don't. I'm not a follower. I'm a follower of Yahshua the Messiah, but I'm. I, I, I'm not part of the go along, get along gang. But because of him, I stand. You know, and I'll stand. And because of him, there's a deeper understanding of endurance, of what enduring is. Every principle that we can learn, there's always a deeper understanding of it, and he'll show you. Things that you may know, he'll show you, he'll give you a deeper understanding of all things. So I don't have to, you know, um, is that Matthew 11 and 28? Can we have, can we, yeah, oh, can, I it? can I have Matthew 11 and 28, I believe. I call it all the time, always forget. Matthew 11, let me start at 27. Okay. And turning to his disciples, he said, All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Okay, so look, reveal. Because Yahweh has, we have able bodied ministers. And it's like when they preach and they will draw, I've seen ministers labor to actually get us to have an understanding of anything, right? But the revelation, again, I said it before, you can preach until you blue in the face. We're not going to get it. That's why they tell us to take notes. They used to tell us to put it on the shelf, you know, if it's something that you don't understand or you can't get it because you, I'm going to figure it out. You won't figure out any of this. It is by revelation only. Okay, read. 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And hallelujah for that. We're in school at the highest learning. You see, and but he says, take my yoke upon you. This is not a Harvard or a Yale thing. They have pressure on them. And this is not no fly by night or anything like that. Not saying that at all, you know, but he knows what he's doing. The, there's no pressure on me here. I don't have to try to um, um, feel nobody else's shoes. I don't have to. Um, do anything like that. There's no expectations, not from any man, because I know anything that I get, or, and not just me, but all of us, anything that we kind of get or understand, and we're truly getting it from Yahshua himself. And so I don't have to, um, I don't have to have that on me. You understand? He was like, he, he's taking all of these different things, the things that it was in the world, that bogged us down, the different um, traditions, the different, whatever it is, you know, you couldn't wear red, bring your nail polish, whatever, whatever it, it might have been. He has relieved us from all of these different things. So he's given us our portion. And I'm not lukewarm either. 
you see, because this is about the people and what I was seeing and the things that caused me to be frustrated, you know. I can't pretend like it's all, you know, it, it's not fake as far as, you know, we have love for the brethren. We don't always love the brethren. It's just like um, at your job, though. You know, sometimes you have people that you work around that it's like, um, that really get on your nerves, you know? But it's like, but we know how to behave as adults. You know, we know how to be civil, as they uh, as they say, to each other and things like that. Not faith, you know what I'm saying? There's always, uh, the scripture lesson was about that as far as reconciliation and stuff. But it's really, um, again, what's in somebody's heart and what's in somebody's mind. So I'm not lukewarm, you know, you're going to be either or. I mean, you know what he said about being lukewarm. I'll spew you out of my mouth. Either I'm cold or I'm hot. You know, we know how he feels about lukewarm. And so I know that we're in here, and I always get this one mixed up. We read, research, and repeat, or read, research, and rehearse, because that's, you know, Dr. Kim, we used to talk about sometimes you have to beat him over the head 40 times. That's why we keep going through the same things over and over and over and over and over and over again. It is a beautiful thing because you're going to always pick up something. I don't care how long you've been knowing it. You may have forgotten something, but it is good just the way. Yahweh said that he created all things and he saw that it was good. And even with this school, it is it, it actually is good. The teaching, you know, of Yahshua the Messiah. And so we read, research, and repeat. And, um, but we don't mimic, you see, because that's fake. And that, that actually shows you don't have to do that because see, the Holy Spirit will, you'll stumble through some things, but he'll get you through it. You don't want to mimic. You don't want to try to be like somebody, you see, because remember that boy wanted to be like the most high. And it's not about that. You don't have to do that because the Holy Spirit is actually here um, to redeem us. You know, and um, um, with all substance, with all substance. So I'm grateful for discernment. And he had to remind me, it's to show you, not to throw you. So you can't change who people are or how they think or anything like that. And Yahweh has everyone set in just where he's, he has every vessel playing what part he wants them to play. He actually has, um, this is purpose for all of us to be exactly where we are. So that was another thing that he actually, you know, just got me through as far as, again, for me, it was a situation. It's not the people. I've been dealing with people a long time and, you know, you learn how to um, choose your battles. You know what to deal with and what not to deal, deal with. A lot of stuff, you just simply don't deal with it. So it was just the situation and stuff. But he is a redeemer and he is beautiful. And here we are. You know, this is beautiful. Like the song says, he's in complete control, you know, and he, he's actually running his show. And me and one of the brothers are always talking about just get your popcorn, just get your popcorn. <laughs> and so because that's all we have to do is to be able to discern and be obedient to what this is in Yahweh. And again, don't let nobody put no pressure on you or don't take it that way because sometimes I don't think that people mean it that way. But again, everyone doesn't have the gift of um, expressing things in a certain way, you know, not trying to cater to anyone, but certain words, certain things are intimidating. Do you see? Even if the person is not trying to make them feel intimidated, it has a way of doing that. Yahshua knows exactly how to deliver the message, you know, and it's all about the intent. So keep your eye on Yahshua, period. And so and just one more thing, because I don't know if somebody else wants to speak, but we're always talking about, we know who the Holy Spirit is. And, you know, that's what this class is about, you know, learning, knowing, and understanding, you know, this divine vision and revelation that was given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year of 1931. And he told us not to believe it just because he said, just, you know, um, make him prove it until we're satisfied. And we're all still sitting here because we are oh so satisfied. But this whole thing he has given us, um, 
books. We have a cloud of um, witnesses from books, from textbooks, to transcripts, and, you know, our charts, you know, which is the vision, you know, broken down tables and plates, you know, pictorial illustrations. But we know who the Holy Spirit is, and we can point up there all day long. We can point and get us up those seven steps. We can correlate, and it's like, and it's beautiful. It is actually beautiful to see it see it all being taught you know this is an awesome class so it's like but what what is the holy spirit what is the holy spirit we know who he is but what is the holy spirit and how is he manifesting in us and you know that's like a rhetorical question that's just something to think about but how is he manifesting in in you you know the school is the school of the highest learning and our doctrine you know, this gospel leads us to Yahshua. It leads us to him. It's all purpose this way. But he is so much more than what's depicted on the charts. See, you can't point to Yahshua the Messiah. You may be able to see him manifest in the vessel. You might be able to see that. But as far as, again, you know, we learn, know, and understand. And we point and we and go all of those charts and show you where the Holy Spirit is and go back to Moses and draw out, you know, these types and shadows and things like that. But how is the Holy Spirit manifesting within us? And this is, it, it's just, it, she's just so much more than what's depicted on the charts. You see, when the Holy Spirit is so much more than academics. And I'm not trying to make light of why we're here because he brought us to a school, not a church. He brought us to a school for us to learn of him. Just talked about that in Matthew. But he's so much more than that. You know, this is the tip of the iceberg. You know, we are newbies on the block because we were just talking about um, on a dispensation chart about, you know, the next ages to come and then he's going to start the week all over again. Well, he didn't start it this week, even our week. We're the new ones on the block because he's been doing this. He's been doing this, you see. And so, and it's eternal, you know. So um, it's just deeper. It's just much more deeper. It's not just about what you know. It's not the scholastics of this, but not trying to downplay that's the reason why we're in class to learn. But it's not just that. You don't want to just take it as that because the book is doctrine and all these things, these are things to lead us to the Holy Spirit. It is not the Holy Spirit. You know, it is, you know, as far as learning, but it's just deep. So anyway, these charts have to become a reality, you know, within us. Everything that we're learning has to become a reality. And I've come to understand more and more, I don't care how much you can get to the holy place and what you can draw out, which is very important, is very important. But only he can do this. The Holy Spirit, he can only, you can only have the Holy Spirit by him manifesting this himself within us. You know, that's just it. So I really trust Yahshua. And it's a beautiful thing. So I thank him for the sixth step, the veil of the flesh. See, we understand it was written twain and we understand these things as far as what happened with the doctrine, you know, what actually happened, you know, um, as far as that sanctuary becoming one. I just want those things to be within me in all things, you know. And again, if you fall off or fall astray or something gets you or whatever, because we're still human, you know, you still have emotions. We can't pretend like we walk on water. And no, like, not like anyone has, but, you know, we say a lot of different things that become watered down. But people are people in or out of this class. So, anyway, all praises, all glory, all honor belong to Yahweh, our Elohim, through Yahshua the Messiah. And I love you guys. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Versal Mack. Um, so was there anyone else who would like to give a testimony or a lecture?
if you're on Zoom, you can open your mic up or on site. Anyone? Okay. So I'll go ahead and call our next speaker, um, Dr. Marlon Love. Good evening, class. Good evening. How's everybody good doing? Evening. It's good to be here. How are you? I'm fine. Um, typical day's journey, I guess. Um, I really enjoyed the uh, remarks of the previous speaker and the things that she's come to experience and learn having come back or been in class, not come back, but been in class, um, kind of exploring the 40 plate chart that we have been bequeathed to us by our founder, Dr. Henry Cliff McKinley. Um, we re rehearse these things um, over and over and over again, much like this Moses chart, you know. We've seen this chart here when he put this chart together and the stages by which this chart was put together. And these images on here don't change, you know. All the charts, they pretty much remain the same. Yet and still, we can talk about this burning bush that Moses come to see. And we can come and see that and read that it was a bush that burned, but it wasn't consumed, right? But it says that he turned to look and to see. And he saw uh, an angel in this burning bush. And there's often times, I know Dr. Samuel Solis would uh, admit to it, you learn bits and pieces oftentimes. Like covenant, this heart representing a covenant, right? And then the second heart that Moses brought up represents the covenant, you know? <coughs> this last class, Will was going over something a little bit about the trips, right? And we went to the 34th chapter of Exodus, talking about um, Moses' third trip, right? Mm -hmm. That Yahweh going to have Moses hew out his own tables of stone and his own heart, and he had to bring it up. But yet at the same time, we'll express that Yahshua didn't go up with Moses' third trip. Mm -hmm. And when we read over there in the 33 and 8, if you can grab that right quick. I listened to a little bit of the class I wasn't here on Tuesday, but I often like to catch a little feeling. Exodus 33 and 8. I think that's what it was. Yep. And it came to pass when Moses went out into the meeting tent mm -hmm. that all the people rose up and stood every man at his tent door and looked after Moses until he was gone into the tabernacle. You're talking about this tent here on this back side here out there in the wilderness that's drawn here. And this was Joshua's tent, and that's where he dwelt at, right? Mm -hmm. But let's go ahead and keep reading this. And it came to pass, as Moses entered into the meeting tent, the cloudy pillar descended mm -hmm. and stood at the door of the meeting tent, mm -hmm. and Yahweh talked with Moses. Now it said Yahweh <laughs> talked with Moses, Yeah. right, at this meeting tent. This tabernacle hadn't been constructed yet because Yahshua's, over here at this meeting tent or this sanctuary it, it expresses keep reading okay. and all the people saw the cloudy <coughs> pillar stand at the meeting tent door and all the people saw this you follow this cloud is likened to a man and it brought my attention that you have these 73 that saw the Elohim and now they're seeing this cloud that's standing mm. as a body mm -hmm. keep reading mm. And all the people <coughs> rose up and worshiped every man in his tent door. Now, this is happening in between the second trip and the third trip that this is taking place. This event of Moses coming and talking with Yahshua mm -hmm. at this tent. Keep reading. And Yahweh spake unto Moses face to face as a man speaketh unto his friend. Now, you got Yahweh speaking <coughs> to Moses. Keep reading. And he turned again into the camp, but this, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, mm -hmm. departed not out of the meeting tent. Out of this meeting tent, 
you don't have Joshua or Yahshua coming out of this meeting tent. And you have Moses returning to the, 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 the assembly, if you would, right? Because they saw him go in, mm -hmm. and they saw that cloud descend and go in. But yet Moses is the only one that's coming, coming out. out. Keep reading. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and Moses said unto Yahweh, See, thou saidst unto me, Bring up this people, mm -hmm. and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Mm -hmm. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, Show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. Mm -hmm. And he said, My presence shall go before thee, and I will give thee rest. Mm -hmm. And he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be distinguished, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. Now it's this people, the peculiar people, that Yahweh chose in order to go about to show forth his purpose whereby we're here at this late freight in the time going over the exact same thing that they experienced as an example for us to obtain, as the previous speaker said, the information, the confidence, the understanding, and the, re the re respect and rapport for one another, you follow, you know, in this trek or this journey that we're going on. Mm -hmm. Keep reading. And Yahweh said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. Mm -hmm. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, mm -hmm. and I will proclaim the name of Yahweh before thee, mm -hmm. and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, mm -hmm. and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. Mm -hmm. And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. Mm -hmm. And Yahweh said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass, while my glory passeth by, mm -hmm. that I will put thee in the cleft of the rock, mm -hmm. and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. Now, I thought that that would happen when it was up here. We read about it. That happens up here, but he's reading, telling us about it before he's back up on this, on this mountain. You follow? And I didn't catch that Say all the time. Again. When you're reading here, talking about he's gonna pass before him. I'm thinking that that, I'm thinking that he that when we read that before, that he was, he was up here doing it at that time. He's too. reading about it. We're reading about it before his third trip. Yeah. He's just letting them know what's gonna happen, and then when he does come up here, then when we read the 34th chapter <coughs> and talk about that, he shows him the reconfiguration. Right. And then the subsequent fall of man. Right. Okay. He, he, then he sees him walking, turning his backside. Right. That, it, that is him walking yeah. down right. through. But he, we're, we were reading about it before he even gone up there and did mm -hmm. it. And I kind of have put him that whole synopsis I up did there. Too. <coughs> I did at too. once. I appreciate right? that. Yeah. So when Will talked, a bit, I, mean I had to read on down through. Will didn't go over that specifically, but it was something to, to catch. Um, mm -hmm. Another th thing, I've been studying the moderation, and I've kind of broken up the moderation some to get a, mm. a uh, I don't know, just a further explanation of why Dr. Kinley made the statement that if you knew or understood the moderation, you know, that you can go home, right? right. <laughs> and so I just kind of, for myself, because it took me years to I've heard it for years, but just to remember it, the way it just flows so beautifully, it's hard to just to memorize it for me. So I've broken it down, and it says under one place, it says that Yahweh chose a cloud to symbolize himself. 
right? And I and I wanted to find out where does it say that Yahweh chose a cloud to symbolize himself. Right. At, right? And so I mean that's a statement that he right. that he that he said that he chose a cloud. And then we don't understand one place was here was when uh, he led the children of Israel out, right? Because most people subsequently watch the movies and stuff, and they see in Moses leading the people out, and Moses doing this, and Moses doing that. <coughs> they have a song unto Moses and everything else. So you ask the most people who led the children of Israel out of Egypt, they're, they're going to say Moses led them out of Egypt, right? But in the moderation, we say that uh, Yahweh knew that man would not be able to perceive him in this state, therefore it behooved him. No, before he says that, he said, um, Yahweh knowing, <coughs> he he led the children of Israel out of Egypt, right? And not Moses. That's what the moderation says, that he, Yahweh, cho led the children of Israel out, right? And so little points like that was uh, important whereby he chose a cloud in this instant, right, that went red before him, a, 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 fire, a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, but that cloud was moving. Mm -hmm. He went behind. We just read in 33 about that cloud that was a pillar at this, at this, uh, sanctu at this tent here. Right. It taught with Yahshua the Messiah, right? And, and, then, and then on the 40th chapter of the Exodus, you're going to have that cloud appearing again when it comes down and it, and it officiates or it right. takes residence because he kicks Moses out of the tabernacle, right, after it's completed. And then you have that cloud that comes down like into a man that enters into, in, into this uh, tabernacle and dwells between these two archangels, right? And he did, did that for 40 years, that process. And whenever that cloud moved, they moved, right? And so we're privy to that. But grab me... Uh, Grab me uh, Genesis, the ninth chapter. I think you can start at one. Something I saw was pretty interesting, too. We're talking about Moses here, or Noah, excuse me, Noah. And this plate here is an upper ascending plate, right? And we've been shown how these charts, there's 12 of these distinct um, sequences or events. Right? You have 12 of them. And they're all set up in this threefold pattern, right? And we understand that when we read that, that there's an upward, uh, there's an upward or an ascending and descending motion in these, in these charts, right? Mm -hmm. In order to bring about an understanding or an awareness about Yahshua's operation, right? So I was reading about a cloud. When did Yahweh first speak about a cloud to anybody, right? Now, I understand that Noah took place before Moses, but no man knew about Noah until Moses was shown how to write it down through the third trip, right? And he was able to write down the events here with Noah. So we're going to read here in Genesis, the ninth chapter. Genesis 9 and 1. Mm -hmm. Did and Elohim blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, mm -hmm. Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every bird of the heavens, upon all that moveth upon the earth and upon all the fishes of the sea. Into your hand are they delivered. Every moving thing that liveth shall be for food for you. Even as the green herbs have I given you all things, but flesh with the life which is in the blood shall ye not eat. And surely your blood of your lives will I require. At the hand of every beast will I require it. And at the hand of man, at the hand of every man's brother, will I require the life of man. Mm -hmm. Whoso sheddeth man's blood by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of Elohim made he man. And you be ye fruitful and multiply. Bring forth abundantly in the earth and multiply therein. And Elohim spake unto Noah and to his sons with him, saying, 
and I, behold, I establish my covenant with you, and with you, your seed after you. Mm -hmm. Now he's going over that same event, repeating after he got done talking about with Adam and Eve, about going forth and multiplying. Now you have this flood that destroyed that world at that then known time, right? And how you have them giving a, 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 a covenant to go forth and do this thing, right? Keep reading. Ten. And with every living creature that is with you, of the fowl of the cattle, and of every beast of the earth with you, from mm -hmm. all that go out of the ark. Talking about that ark, that all those that came into that ark, right, two by two, just as Adam named those beasts two by two, right? Mm -hmm. Keep reading. To every beast of the earth. Mm -hmm. And I will establish my covenant with you. Now, Yahweh is going to establish a covenant with them. Right? For them to do these things. Mm -hmm. Keep reading. Neither shall all flesh be cut off anymore by the waters of a flood. Now, by the waters of the flood, the world's not going to be cut off to you. But what, and what does he give a witness for us to, to understand? Because remember, this was an upward pattern. And now we're here in the most holy place. And we're looking at the ark that's out between or rested between two mountains you follow you have Noah and his family coming out in this covenant given unto Noah I and mean, that there's going to be a promise given to Noah keep reading neither shall there any more be a flood to mm -hmm. destroy the earth mm -hmm. and Elohim said this is the sign of the covenant which I make between me and you mm -hmm. and every living creature that is with you Mm -hmm. For perpetual generations. Yeah, for perpetual generations, over and over again, he's not going to destroy it by water. But yet, he's going to do what? For a sign for us. Read. I do set my bow in the cloud. He set a bow in the cloud. That took me aback because I thought that he just put a bow in the sky. Mm -hmm. See, he put the bow, which represented Yahshua the Messiah, back into himself, which is the cloud. Because he said a cloud is what he's going to use to symbolize himself, right? Right. And then now they're going to look to a bow, right? Just as we're supposed to look to one Yahshua the Messiah. Right. You follow? Exactly. So when we look to Yahshua the Messiah, that's our sign, mm -hmm. whether we're in waters or fire at this time. Because we know that the fire is truly the preaching of the gospel unto salvation or that uh, reconciliation that we talked about it in the scripture reading mm -hmm. that was so nice today. So when you point out <coughs> these little things and seeing how that cloud and everything that's in that book because man didn't write, write that book. Yahshua Messiah through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit through a person, Moses, uh, Obadiah, Joel, and all the other patriarchs, they wrote th by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and to believe in that we have to take that everything that's said about a bow being placed in a cloud, not just merely the sky, but in the cloud. Mm -hmm. And that cloud is representing, representing Yahshua Messiah because we know that we're going to have that round trip, right? We're going to come out of that cloud or come from Canaan's land down into Egypt and you're going to make that pilgrimage back into the promised land, right? Mm -hmm. You have Yahshua Messiah being the second manifestation or a physical portion, right, when he walked around the Palestinian Judean hills, correct? And then he died. He took off of this flesh, and we understand now that that flesh was uh, set up or predestined to be sacrificed, right? Whereby he's going to be the resurrected one of, of Adam's transgression by way of the Holy Spirit, and when we see he manifested here, he returned back to the Father. Just like Zashua would say, you're going to put a bow in the sky for you to look at perpetually. Mm -hmm. And he's going to go back into the cloud. And I just thought that was beautiful how Yahweh, pure spirit, knew in mankind, mankind were not going to be able to perceive him in this state and condition, took on a shape and took on form as Elohim. Right? And we see this is a manifestation that he took on uh, as a type, right, one manifestation, and then we understand that this manifestation was able to be whatever he willed himself to right. be, you mm -hmm. follow, 
and then he willed himself to be Yahshua the Messiah. So <laughs> all the way back here during the times of Moses, which a lot of Christianity can't pick up on because they're uh, duped by thinking that this is Joshua. Right. Not understanding that this is Yahshua, mm -hmm. the same Yahshua that came in at the end of that age <coughs> or the fourth dispensation. You follow? When he was instituting this event down here with the children of Israel, right? right? And he was, what, 30 years old, 10 years after Moses left up out of Egypt for having killed a man. You follow? Mm -hmm. Killed a man, buried the man, and resurrected out into the land of Midian to a high priest, his father. Right. So there's another principle of a death, burial, and a resurrection or returning unto a father, father figure. Right. That's, what, that's what Ruel represents, as right. it were. You follow as a prince in the land of Midian. Um, it was funny. I think it was Saturday. I was, uh, my mo uh, mother-in-law was home and turned the TV on and there was a movie about Moses. Did you know it was on Netflix? Oh, yeah. 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 And it it's yeah, it, it, it's, it's somewhat <laughs> of a, yeah, you've seen it then. I thought I was the only one. <laughs> and so I, yeah, it's talking about Yahweh, and, and the <laughs> subtitle said Yahweh and stuff. <coughs> And so, <laughs> get the mic. I'm going to talk about it. <laughs> it just brought, it just came to my mind. I wasn't going to ever say it. I even watched it, but <laughs> I watched bits and pieces of it. <laughs> <coughs> I just wanted to make the statement that I thought it was pretty uh, f uh, entertaining that they even made the statement at the very beginning that this is not a... Uh, though they pull from all this stuff, it's not like a consensus that this is what <laughs> this oh. is what happened. Oh, I <laughs> like didn't see they that yeah, part. they state that at the <laughs> it's like it written in the beginning, mm -hmm. and then they kind of like they kind of take everybody's opinion or everybody's research and just throw it all together. So yeah. like you were saying, they say uh, I will be, but but they s first say yeah, they say first say I am that I am. Mm. And I uh, and I will or or what uh, and what I will to be. Mm -hmm. I am what I am and what uh, and what I will to be. Okay. So they're like they cover everybody. Mm. It, it's just and then the way they go <laughs> about the story, uh, they take it quite literally. I know mm. you're gonna go into it, but I just thought I'd comment on it. Yeah. yeah. No, it, it was it was quasi good, you know. I but it just got to a point I could I couldn't really take it anymore because I didn't want to remember. <laughs> I didn't want to end up remembering anything that they've said. <laughs> they have it colorful. Their acting is great. The the the, the yeah. their intent is is is, is interesting. Yeah. Just keep it on. Okay. They they do uh, they pay way too much attention to the love story between mm -hmm. <laughs> between Moses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They really skip past. Like the important parts of Moses' life coming up mm -hmm. in the uh, in, in Pharaoh's in household, in hel oh Pharaoh's yeah. household, mm -hmm. and they s really skip <coughs> past to where he's out in the desert. To that's what they they skip past all the major parts, and they're focusing on Moses being uh, and falling in love and having a relationship. Well, with that's it goes back to what I said earlier that most <laughs> people they're not going to recognize Joshua. They could, they, can, they or or Yahweh for that matter, or that cloud. They're not seeing and understanding that cloud. They think it's all about Moses and what Moses was feeling because he didn't know that he was a Hebrew or not. That was part of the other part of that movie. He knew he was a Hebrew because he had been circumcised, right? And so that was another <laughs> grave <laughs> error in... <laughs> Go ahead. How it, they, they depict it as it just dawned on him <laughs> to just... Ha he just had this epiphany, man, we really shouldn't be enslaving people yeah, like his, that's yeah, right. They mm -hmm. said his his humanity came about, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Like he just kind of a whimsical, <laughs> like dawned on him. Yeah, like this is what I should be doing. It was interesting. Oh, they I had they so had really documentary right. of guys. You know what, what do you call it? Academically trained. Well, not just a movie. You know, they had people interjecting, giving their commentary. Yes. is what I want to say. Oh. And they had a. a they had yeah, rabbis, rab women, the different people depending on what topics it was. Yeah. Yeah, people like that are that are respected in mm. their field of study. Right. Okay. That's and what it was. Yeah, and they would have their their mm -hmm. their title at the end on uh, the bottom of the screen, mm -hmm. 
And so they, w- it's like a docu series mm-hmm. about Moses. Or is it all Moses or the Bible itself? <coughs> Moses, oh, Moses. Yeah, it's supposed to be about. It's yeah, supposed I to I be didn't, about. I didn't see the very beginning. I just heard when they said uh, Yahweh, or I seen on the subtitle. Then I just kind of, I wasn't really looking at it. It was just playing in the background, but I just it kept making me want to 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 look at it. Use the mic. The and all that. What was that? Uh, they, they mentioned about Pharaoh's daughter, the one that um, raised Rick. Moses, <coughs> mm-hmm. that she basically denied her her heritage mm-hmm. and she crossed the Red Sea with Moses. Oh, they did that? Yeah. Oh, she did? Yeah. yeah. So, like, they had Moses that here. Yahweh found favor in her. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. And then you even the the event it was of this burning bush was really dramatic. You know, this is w- this is what I kind of took me for a little thing. Climb the mount. Yeah, they showed him climbing. Yeah, they didn't say it was on the backside. Mm-hmm. They just so showed him climbing up in the mount. That he he was spotting the <laughs> the burning <laughs> bush from far away <laughs> on top of the yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and he was laying down while um, the the uh, cloud or the angel in the cloud told him to take off his shoes off his feet because mm-hmm. he was standing on holy ground. Right. So, but he was laying on the ground when they told him that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and so. Man, I gotta see this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You know. Do you know the exact name of it at all? I don't know. You'll find it. But so yeah, you have these renditions, and so um, um, it just goes to it doesn't because uh, it, it kind of does a number of things because it because they go through the best way they can interpret reading about about Moses. But it does help to challenge you to know yeah. what does happen. Yeah. I mean, they go into the names of the seven daughters of Jethro. Uh, we can read it in our Bible, too. But it, it does give some pictorial live animation to the events of, of, uh, that transpire with Moses. But when they see it um, and they, they, they misimply it. <coughs> called Testament. The story of Moses. Okay, called Testament so on Netflix. On Netflix. <coughs> so, with that being said, and you have a whole world of stuff um, that have various con- um, constructs of how or what Moses was really all about, but they don't keep with the script that was written by the, the Holy Spirit, right? And therefore, their context is totally pl- blown out of proportion. Because we understand that Moses is on the backside of this mountain, tending to his father-in-law's sheep, you see. And it's his sheep that is, is the principle here because Moses is, is liking to the father, uh, son-in-law to Jethro, taking care of the sheep. Mm-hmm. Just like that was the institution of what Joshua had come to do when he came in to do his father's business right. and tend to his father's sheep. You follow, and so when they give a movie like that, and they misrepresent what the scriptures were really de- depicting, they're at air in their rendering. Now I'll just leave it alone after this last point. Now I don't know, but they don't give him a name at this burning bush other than I am, right? And so what's interesting is that was interesting to me when you know he finally met Aaron. And Aaron met Moses and his nephews, and they tallywag down into Egypt, right? And before they go to Pharaoh, they have a, uh, a, a meeting. They're in a meeting room in their houses. And what I thought was funny was that um, they weren't believing who Moses was because they didn't know Moses. They didn't know because he was a stranger and that didn't realize that he was Hebrew because he because they know that he grew up in Pharaoh's household. Because they show how his daughter, how his mom put him in the river Nile and his sister followed him down and saw. He, so Aaron knew who he was, but Moses right. didn't know, right? And so Moses is coming back to a group of people that don't know who, he, you know, they don't know each other. So they're sus- suspect of Moses, basically. And they, they say, well, if you had a vision, what was the name? And what I thought was funny was he had to go to this old lady that was laying down in the house, who was kind of like a, 
uh, she was a shaman, but just like the older, the oldest person of the Hebrews at that time. <laughs> and he had to give her a name that he was given at the burning bush. And when, she, when he whispered it in there, because no one else could hear the name, right? So they say, well, if the old lady recognizes whether it was the right name or not, then we will believe you, wow. right? And when he whispers the name into the ears as though she received it down through the oracles of Adam and yeah. through Noah and everything else, she started chanting Yahweh, 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 and he gave everybody great cheer as though that was the confidence <laughs> moving, moving forward that they could follow Moses, right? <laughs> so, so when you have those kind of things being depicted and they're not really sure how to really explain that name, then they're left with a whole lot of conjecture. So we watch those things and exercise ourselves against it like holidays. We know that Easter, we just had Easter. Uh, there was another thing I wanted to bring up, um, Easter. Do we, I, didn't know, I didn't know this either. I don't know if other people did, that Easter's in the Bible, right? You know that? Easter, the word? I didn't. Yeah, yeah that, that was another thing I wanted to bring up on Sunday, but I missed yeah. talking about it because I was trying to wrap it up. Acts 12 and 4. <sighs> King James. It may not be in the Holy Name. I'm sure it's not, it, in the Holy Name it's not that. So you can put up, the, you put up both versions, if you would, so that we can see. This is a little one-off, right, since Easter was here. Okay, so uh, 12 and 4. Mm -hmm. So right there on the screen, we can see um, yeah, so on the left hand side, you have the King James Version, and the right hand side, you, you have the Holy Name, right? And so now you see where it says uh, the qu quadrants of soldiers to keep him intending after Easter right. to bring him forth to the people. <coughs> it's explaining, um, they're explaining, I believe that's the resurrection of um, Peter. Yeah, grab me the chart. Right. Mm, 30, uh, 31. No? No, 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 35. Yeah. Uh, the, the, uh, the resurrection. So like Vercel, yeah, the confirm, reconfirmed. Resurrection reconfirmed, right? Is where you're getting this verbiage in the 12th chapter of Acts. And I hadn't seen Easter in there until someone brought it to my attention too, right? And so in the King James Version that is. And so we understand that that Easter is Passover. Everybody comprende with that? Yep. You had a question, Aaron? <coughs> um, now, is that just the. Uh, how do they translate it to Easter? That's what I just don't get. Because if it's Passover, mm -hmm. then that's. Well, remember the. Passover was what the Jews had to do every year. And we, uh, we know that Yahshua ate the last Passover with his 12, uh, 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 with his 12, and then Judas went and did his thing, right? And then the next day they took Yahshua and put him on this cross on Friday, right? And that was the end because he's fulfilled those persons, places, and things. And he said, well, he'll no longer eat this cup with you on this, you know, in this, I forget where it says that, that he'll no longer eat this meal with you anymore. And that, that fulfills Passover. Now, we're some 40 years into the Acts, talking about Peter and the resurrection reconfirmed. And therefore, they're still worshiping and still going through the Passover. Because we know that he, it ended, they still kept doing the Passover. 
You follow? And in their doing that, they included Istar and the different pagan holidays to include what they were thinking as a holy regular day. I think that's where I'm mm -hmm. stuck. What, uh, <coughs> where does Easter come from? Like oh, Estar um, is a, a fertility goddess, as it were. And that's what the pagans were worshiping as a, 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 a being of life. Mm -hmm. We read something, we read something, <coughs> there was another word, you read it yesterday in class too, um, satyr, S-A-T-Y-E-R, bring that up, P it was a pretty interesting word, I'd never seen it, I think we were reading <coughs> um, Isaiah, 34th chapter, um, on Tuesday. Go ahead. Go ahead. So everybody get that Easter thing in there, right? And you have that at a period of time where you're talking about uh, y yeah, the resurrection reconfirmed through Yahshua. And they go, this is, uh, you know, during the time that he uh, preached to, seven years later, had preached to the Cornelius in his household, right? about the uh, resurrection of Yahshua the Messiah. So Seder is a half man, half goat. Right. So you got half man, Seder, half man, half goat, right? And it shows, you know, the picture of it? So some people can see it. We've seen them before. They have, you know, some, some of them, the Greeks have them as having horse, looking more like a horse. And then the Romans have them looking more like a goat. Yeah. He has a flute, he's a uh, uh, lavish, uh, what do you call it, kind of a merry old guy that's kind of into any old thing, right? And that's mm. and that star coming from that traditional, and there you go. <coughs> the second one over, or the guy on his hind, hind feet, yeah. Setar, so it was, you know, that word was in the Bible, you know, in Isaiah when we read it. And I'd never seen that word before, so I wanted to know, you know, what's that depicting, right? <coughs> uh, there's Greek, and then there was a Roman one. Uh, get that guy here. Uh, this guy here. No, this guy here. Up here. Yeah. Setar. So we've seen those images before in a couple of shows and whatnot. So Greek, Greek mythology. that's Greek mythology, right? But Isaiah is writing, right? right? I'm talking about the principle, the character, just like we talk about this snake, right? Yeah. <coughs> we think this snake is something that was talking literally to Eve, right? But we've now come to understand that it was a psychological thing within Eve's consciousness. We have the Lucifer depicted here uh, as though he was actually flew up to Eve. But we know that's not the case because you're not having Adam <coughs> doesn't see Lucifer, but he does, Adam does see Eve looking at that tree to be desired. Isaiah 34, right? And what? 14. Isaiah 34 and 14. Uh, you can read it. Okay. Isaiah 34. Go up a verse. Go up a verse above. Mm. Oh. Isaiah 34, 34 and 14. That tires in there. Go ahead, read. 12. They shall call the nobles to proclaim the kingdom, but none shall be there, and all its princes shall be nothing. So the noble people, the common people, the Gentile people, people that know not Yahweh. Keep reading. And the thorns shall come up in her palaces, mm -hmm. needles and brambles mm -hmm. in the fortresses thereof, and it shall be a habitation of dragons and a court for isles. So you have all these dis descriptive words that Isaiah is talking about, the nature of a person. 
we're not knowing that there's no one half man and half horse, right? Mm -hmm. But you have these mythologies and these concepts that they've created out, out of the imagination, essentially, right? And we say that we, this gospel is a gospel to tear down that imagination. But keep reading. 14, the wild beast of the desert shall also meet with the wild beast of the island, mm -hmm. and the satire shall cry to his fellow. Mm -hmm. The screeching owl also shall rest there and find for herself a place of rest. Good one. That's good. Yeah. So you just see that it's in there, and that is the concepts of man that they're dealing with. And just like mankind had a concept of this snake, and they had a concept about Moses with all their best intentions to explain it. They're still, a, they're, they're the noble people that Isaiah is talking about right there, of thinking they're wise. Mm -hmm. But yet they're just, it's, it's, it's caught up in thickets and thorns and briar, and they don't know what to do. They're going to be the ones looking up. When they know not Yahweh or know they don't speak according to the law and the testimony, right? We can talk about these things. Um, with that said, um, <coughs> grab me um, Second Corinthians, fifth chapter, tenth chapter. Uh, yeah. Second Corinthians 10 and 1. Now, now, we just talked about the satire being half man, half beast. We talked about the dragon. We talked about these things that, that, uh, that stir up the imagination of man, right? Trying to fix how Moses got the children of Israel up out of Egypt. And no telling where they went after that, because I only watched 20 minutes of the episode. But... They have a whole thing, and people watch that, and they begin to ask questions. That's what I thought was good. My, so my wife she was there and was asking questions, but it made, made her have to go back and wonder, hey, how did, how did Moses yeah. do this, and how did Moses kill that uh, Egyptian down here, right? So it does twofold, whereby it does help to watch, and then, uh, and then and it can be more imaginative than you really need to really digest, you know what I'm saying? Until you really know and you can stand firm on the eye. That's not how that went down at all, right? But if you don't know, you may wonder, maybe they do have a, uh, uh, an idea about it. And that's the twofold nature that's kind of plagued up in there. But it does prompt the question to go find out, right? So on that end, it's, it's, it was good. Um, Anybody have any questions on Zoom or anything? No, but you know what? Okay, yeah. look, the Seder, it's a Seder. I remember that. I'm so silly from Percy Jackson and the Olympians. That was the half man, the half goat or whatever it was. It was a Seder. Oh, okay. I don't remember. <laughs> I remember. I like the movie. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and, and, they, and they still have, they, it kept some traction. It's in the movie now, right? Um, uh, so this will read for 2 Corinthians 10. 2 Corinthians 10 and 1. Mm -hmm. Now I saw myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of the Messiah, mm -hmm. who is presence am I, who in presence am I based among you, but being absent and bold toward you. But I beseech you that I may I may not bold be bold when I am present with that confidence, wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. See, we're not walking according to the flesh or the imaginations that they demonstrate on Netflix and get money and and finances and stuff and tricking and deceiving the people. You follow? Um, Paul here is talking about being bold where he needs to be bold at, but he, he amongst his people, he's base. You understand? 
because we know it's out of the Holy Spirit or the preaching of the gospel that one has anything to say. When we get on the floor, we say we hope that we can clear our consciousness enough to have something repeated or rehearsed to whereby it would edify the assembly, just like us going through words like we're doing. If you've never seen Easter in the Bible, it's good to know that they, they put it in there. It's really Passover, but they put it at a time when they felt that the Greek mythology of Estar, that was a goddess of fertility, was a thing that they put the egg that represents life, and they have a rabbit, which does, um, I forget how they termed it, but rabbit does have a reproduction rate that's higher than most mammals, right? So they, so they kind of merge those c ideas and thoughts mm. together to come up with an egg and a bunny rabbit, just to satisfy the people as to that was in the resurrection of a life, because that's what rabbits do, they bring forth life, and then you got an egg which shows life. forth the life, and then now you got a resurrection of Yahshua's Passover years ago, and they kind of clumped that all in together, and now they got a, now they got one of these right here. What would that be here? Don't show my shoes, I forgot my shoes today, but <laughs> they show the, uh, the tin horns here about uh, uh, merchants, oh, yeah. <laughs> drawing merchants on people, right? So you have the merchantile, in, and they make money from Christmas. Uh, Irish was the holiday, the uh, Irish holiday. St. Patrick's Day, yeah. Valentine's Day. They're making billions of dollars. Yeah. There's a merchant that they put on you and to dupe you into thinking that's, that's some legitimate holiday or holy yeah. day that we're supposed to be groveling in, right? And when we're not like that and we don't go according to the flesh, the concept that that all depicts, right? Keep reading what Saul says about it. Second Corinthians 10 and 3. Mm -hmm. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Mm -hmm. we and that means we're not worn with the flesh. So if I end up being at a party or end up doing something amongst those people celebrating and rebel rousing, I can be there just the same. But psychologically, in my head, I know it's all foolishness, right? So you're not, you're not torn within yourself as though if you are doing it, fit, you're there celebrate or you're there at a celebration, that you're all of, all of a sudden, because some people feel guilty is why I'm bringing it up. Some people feel guilty because they don't want to be around uh, a, a Christmas tree. They don't want to see a Christmas light. You know, they just want to, they, they don't want to see no problems or anything pertaining to a holiday. Because otherwise, you, it's on your mind as though you're partaking in that. Yeah. And I, I'm trying to I encourage agree. and bring, talk about it this way, in that you're not, you're not guilty of, being in that environment or celebrating to Yahweh's because it's on your it's what it's what's on your mind about it, right? When I get calls, people say, I, 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 I walked in and it was a Christmas tree in the in the room and I, ah! and they get very paranoid because they felt that they shouldn't even be around any such celebrations, right? Um, birthdays, hey. It's a birthday. Turn the ages of life is a type and a shadow of something, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. You got the, got the uh, um, birth of Yahshua the Messiah. You got the birth of Moses. Now, we don't celebrate the birthdays. They tried to get you to celebrate a birthday on January the 25th, but it's all wrong. But yet, we do give cards and gifts for ourselves. No, it's not breaking any tradition is all I'm saying. Because otherwise you stop everything, you, you have no conversation with anybody. And this is where I think the previous speaker talked about, you know, everybody is striving to do and to know at whatever level they're at, right? And we, and if we say we have an ability to talk about the gospel, then we, 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 we kind of obligated to preach. And we're going to be preaching to those that know not the gospel. So therefore, these traditions and customs that Yahweh put together to maintain uh, <coughs> the 
waters or rivers, right? He allowed that Pope to restore those carnal ordinances. That's part of the purpose. We can get mad at the Pope, but he still is, was set up to have these contrary customs and traditions be restored of something that has been fulfilled by Yahshua, and now we have to be told the way, the truth, and the life, right? And, and seek Yahweh while he yet may be found, but we're still uh, in peril every day. Saul talks about being in peril. I think he talked about in the fifth chapter. But we're no longer going to and fro in our consciousness. Stable mind. That's what the mind, that's what the, uh, the um, not condemned in our mind, but the uh, um, doxology. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. Falling where? Falling in your consciousness according to imaginations, types and shadows, and, 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 and things that are not of Yahweh, and that you've been taught and you've been shown, right, of how to explain something. And to present you faultless before the presence, you got to be presented. You got to be able to express something of Yahweh, right? <laughs> Keep reading there in Corinthians. I'm sorry. 10 and 4. Okay. For the weapons of our warfare are not there carnal, right. but mighty through Elohim to the pulling down of strongholds of rebels. See, now, that's a whole lot in that statement because our weapon is the gospel of Yahshua Messiah. That's what reconciles the whole world, as we read there tonight, about it being reconciled by Yahshua the Messiah. And those become our weapons. Not the holiday, right? right. But yet we can go, th and in war, think about it, if you're in war, you go through hellacious locations and, and situations you'd rather not be in personally. I know I wouldn't want to be in a lot of those places. But if you're armored with the armor of Yahshua the Messiah, you can sit anywhere. That's what an aim was to investigate the unexplained spirit law, so-called law of the late, late in man. Oh, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions. Setar is a comparative religion. It's mythology. It's a, it's a comparison religion. I can pull it up and look at it and investigate it and read all about it. Huh? It's a myth. Yeah, it's a myth. Um, but that myth was a study for those in the Greeks. Apollos, um, Zeus. Zeus was a, was a god. So they did work. It, it's still a myth, yeah. right? <laughs> but but it, was a, it, was a, it was something that was truly followed. And that satire was something that was probably truly followed, right? That's what I'm expressing. Uh, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. So we are not obligated to vacate or run anywhere and be away from anything that you think might be taboo to Yahweh is what I'm getting at. Right. Mm -hmm. Everything is good and very good. And he's not going to put you in any situation you can't handle, so say the scriptures in, in the book, right? You believe on Yahweh. So we're talking about strongholds and weapons of warfare. Read. 10 and 5. Casting down imagination. There you go. And mm -hmm. every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of the Messiah. Every thought. And this is why I kind of thought, I think even, even the pre previous speaker talked about the change, right? From us merging, as it were. Being a nucleus separating for a little season and kind of rejoining again you know it, it was a lot of a lot of in, it was an interesting time and I, I found a lot of favor of Yahweh in that and I'm thankful for that and uh, just as when we're coming back and we talk about a foundation now we talk about foundation in the workshop right but understand that we already had a foundation that had been laid by Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley about how to set up for the second speaker is what I'm expressing, right? Mm -hmm. And so that becomes a habit that's been my habit for ever and a day. You preach Moses, you preach Moses getting down, you get Moses coming out here into this wilderness, you get these three trips in here set up, right? You get that Moses passing off and then the children of 
children inheriting their promised land, right? <coughs> the inheritance, right? And then you see in Joel, Yahshua Messiah <coughs> came in and fulfilled these things, right? That become a foundation, as it were, of knowing that whole story and how it goes. Does someone bring me water? You like the water? <coughs> so, now that was a foundation. And that's how I recall when someone say you got to lay a foundation. <coughs> then you go over that. But and now, you know, it was expressed um, by a way that we're using essentially the same process. Thank you so much. Using the same process, right? But we're using this tabernacle pattern. And this pattern as has been expressed is a pattern of heavenly things. Because that imagination of pulling down a strongholds is based off of this tabernacle pattern. And so with the previous speakers saying and giving homage to, you know, kind of exploring a lot of these charts a little bit more in, d in depth helps to eradicate some misconceptions or bring, brings back some information oftentimes too, right? Of what we might have forgot. And so when we go through and see how this tabernacle has seven steps, you have a gate. And that brings up another thought I had before. You have this gate, this tabernacle, right? Most holy place, holy place, core roundabout. And you can see all seven steps here, real nice. Huh? Just as you're going over this tabernacle with, with Iggy or whomever the moderator or person's going over these steps here, this tabernacle is <coughs> this tabernacle, right? Right. Yeah, and so we have step one is the gate, huh? But do you find it interesting that you have that law and the prophets, right, that's going to be fulfilled by Yahshua the Messiah? He outside of this gate, as it were. Let me follow. So when you're coming into this gate, you had to be, be invited by the host, which is Yahshua the Messiah. And, and see that he, not Jesus, but that he himself purposed was to fulfill the law and the prophets, which is Elohim, if you would, that set these, his purpose up as the witnesses to Elohim. Because we had to see Elohim. You got 73 people that saw Elohim on the mount, right, when he went up there with Moses. So you have to see Elohim. And you can only get to Yahweh, but by a son. So you have to see these witnesses to even enter into the gate, right? Huh? Circumcision made without hands. But it's a, it's, a, it's a conscious thing, right? And when you see this host that's invited you through this gate, then you get to the righteousness. What's the righteousness? It's the truth about Moses, that Moses was set up by Yahweh and the first man given the name of Yahweh not no little old lady on the bed that they might show you in a do TV documentary is what I'm getting at right and so when you have that righteousness of what an imagination isn't then you got that being burnt up meaning being being unnecessary uh, if you would in these first two steps to, right and then after you get that righteousness resolved or understanding resolved, the second speaker talked about it before, about coming back together again. You got, this, you got to get healed mm -hmm. of, of what you thought it was. And, and it's like a scab. You pick that off, it's, you think it was going to be all right, but you got to get healed, right? right? And, that's a, and that's an immersion. That's what step three is, is that immersion portion here, right? Um, when we get that healing in, then you got this door, this fourth step, right? With the holy cup of anointing oil because you have to be quickened by the Holy Spirit because we understand he's the resurrection, right? Adam being the first man 
is a degeneration. I mean, he brought it in, brought in the conscience of a depraved, sick soul, right? He was ashamed. He was defeated. And then you have this Leviathan or this serpent that demonstrates all the, the kingdoms on earth, the then known kingdoms, as it were, starting with Babylon, the Medes and the Persians and Greece and pagan Rome and Papal Rome. We read this in the Daniel vision, going over these symbols. Again, you got these symbols again, with these leopards with four wings, right? Seven heads, I believe. You got a little horn. They got a face on it, actually. Zoom in on this, because a lot of people don't believe they've got a, they've got a little face on here, on this little horn, out of these ten horns, right? So all these so-called mythologi mm -hmm. mythological uh, symbols and, and, and imagery are pointing to a spiritual principle, right? And so in this class, we were able to see how all of this that mankind was fashioned after, because now it's all wrapped up in one whole nutshell called America, essentially, right? right? right. And now we're dealing with that America, and, don't, and they don't see that Yahshua Messiah is a quickening spirit raised unto the Father, and then seven, 10 days later poured himself out into the hearts and minds of men. We're at the door to receive this, to be able to enter into this fifth step here, which is the holy place, where you have a lampstand, you have a table of showbread, and an altar of <coughs> incense, you follow? And these functions, as the functions that Yahshua Messiah uh, fulfilled when he walked around for 30, 30, 33 and a half years. Yahshua, you've seen Yahshua in this operation fulfilling these things. And then you have the sixth step. That sixth step is the second compartmental veil, right? And that veil has been expressed is the veil of the flesh. Concepts, theories, opinions, and imaginations. Mm -hmm. Huh? These are the things that tie a man or keep a man blinded in their consciousness about the reality or the righteousness of Yahweh. That's right. And we're not, people are, you know, it's by a host to invite you to hear these things. You can't make a person have a revelation. The veil becomes a separation of, of knowing Yahweh or not, or not knowing Yahweh or not knowing Yahweh. I think Will did on Will did it on uh, Tuesday. He showed forth that principle of right. Satan, right? He drew the tabernacle, right? We have a tabernacle for a purpose, to, to draw forth a principle. And we had drawn down here in this tabernacle, set up, yeah, it's set yeah. up like this, mm -hmm. right? And we have Lucifer, we have plate 14, I believe, of that chart. And we can see pictorially how Lucifer was the son of the morning, right? Mm -hmm. And yet he was the brightest angel of them all. He was, he, and he was created so perfect in his ways right. until iniquity. iniquity was found in him. And he shows that how Lucifer, how does it come out? Lucifer comes, uh, I got to do it this way. Lucifer comes out of heaven, right? He was cast wow. out, right. right? But he tries to return, right. but he cannot. So you have that six placed in here, in the, and he can't get past this veil. Right. You follow? He can't get past that veil no more. So he's stuck in this lower part of the earth. Mm -hmm. And remember that that's, and remember, it's all Yahweh. And this, this lower part, you we know, went over how this lower part represents the flesh or carnality, if you would. There's no attributes here. You have attributes here, but that attributes make up the devil and the righteousness and unrighteousness, if you would. We can say it that way. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Yeah, because you have to, you got to, you got to acknowledge that the devil was created by Yahweh, yeah. and he was set up for a purpose. <clears throat> He's not that. That's the righteousness. We don't want to be like that nature that was set up, I and mean, that's where our learning comes in. That's what the gospel helps to purge out. You follow, and it helps that veil 
to be rent in twain. As you as a veil in the temple was written twain when Yahshua gave up the ghost, right? That it is split up to as you can see the reality of into the holy most holy place, which is the seventh step, which is the step whereby Yahweh dwelling on our conscience, because we said the other night too that Satan is not on our throne. That's right. You follow? And that it was expressed that it's Yahweh set there and he's always been there. Now, whether you come into a reality consciously or not and, and have your imaginations destroyed by the gospel of the truth, then you'll never see Yahweh in his right. throne. And therefore, you just go off into oblivion as it were. But for those who accept and see the true common Denomination, uh, grab me the scripture reading right quick, the last few verses, of it, and I'll be right done. Uh, start about the fifth verse up. I think that'll be sufficient. Second Corinthians, you want five and 17? Yeah. Therefore, if any man be in the Messiah. Therefore, therefore, if you be in the Messiah, because this is a woman right here that's in the Messiah. This is what the Elohim is representing. Therefore, if any man be in the Messiah, mm -hmm. he is a new creature. Now, you are a new creature of uh, consciousness. You're not a new Eniba. You're a new understanding, a new righteousness of the thoughts of Yahweh, right? And, and you can't tell who's and who just by looking at them oftentimes, right? Because I still get sick, and we still have issues, and life goes on. But the way we deal with it, the way we face it, the way we interact with it becomes entirely new and different. Keep reading. All things are passed away. Mm -hmm. Behold, all things are become new. Mm -hmm. And all things are of Yahweh. All things are of Yahweh. This guy is of Yahweh. You can't run from him. You can't hide from him. <laughs> but you got to accept that, that he's right. here and this is his domain. And we're here dwelling right within it. But we can be as wise as a serpent and as subtle as the dove, right? That's what Saul was talking about. He can be bold on one end, but he be amongst friends and loved ones. You know how to conduct yourself, right? right. Keep reading. Who hath reconciled us to himself. That's what he's done. Ashur. He's invited us as the host to enter into this great teaching. Dr. Samuel Saul has called it the greatest teaching on earth. You follow? And it's the love of that teaching that reconciles First you, and then you to other people, right? Keep reading. And hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. And hath given us this great gospel, which is a gospel of reconciliation. Read. To wit, that Yahweh was in the Messiah, mm -hmm. reconciling the world unto himself. See, they don't want it. They think that's God's little boy. That's an imagination when you think that Yahshua the Messiah was God's little boy. That's, right. That's a full-on imagination. And when you accept that, you're blinded by a veil, <laughs> by an ignorant state of conditioning and thinking when it says it right clean, clearly that Yahweh was in Yahshua the Messiah. That's right. Keep reading. Not imputing their trespasses unto mm -hmm. them. And hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Mm -hmm. Now then, we are ambassadors for the Messiah. Hallelujah. And though Elohim did beseech you by mm -hmm. us, mm -hmm. we pray you in the Messiah's stead, mm -hmm. be ye reconciled to Yahweh. For he hath made him to be sin offering for us. To Yahweh made him to be that. Because we know that that word was with Yahweh and that word was Yahweh. And we know that that word came down as flesh, the 14th chapter of John, and walked among us. Right. Not us, us in 2024, but them then. But we now know that that quickening or that spirit that was in this man has resurrected in our hearts and minds. Mm -hmm. Last sentence and I'll be done. Who knew no sin uh -huh. that we might be made the righteousness of Yahweh in him. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Dr. Marlon Love. So this will conclude this evening's open lecture and testimony night. Um, we have classes here every Tuesday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. 
and every Thursday from 7.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. and on every Sunday from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. Let us all stand to be dismissed. I'll be reciting the last two verses of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua, the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time, now and ever. Let us all say, Hallelujah. 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 Good night. Peace to Yahshua, brother.